Let me take you back to 2022 in the month of maybe April. Who know if Patrick Mahomes is going to be the same quarterback that we watched. This is the time when the Chiefs are in rebuild mode. And for the Chargers, they are in win now mode. I really think the Kansas City Chiefs are gonna finish last. I think they're gonna finish last in the West. I don't think they're better than the Denver Broncos. I don't think they're better than the Las Vegas Raiders. I don't think they're better than the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. I don't. I think this is the worst team in this division. Sometimes it takes a perfect storm to create a dynasty, and never has there been a storm more categorically perfect than of the Kansas City Chiefs. The greatest dynasty in the history of football? Sure, it's close, but the answer is the Kansas City Chiefs led by Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. Controversial? Absolutely, but here's why. Patrick Mahomes' dominance since taking over as the starting quarterback for the Chiefs has been absolutely absurd. I mean, think about this. It took him six seasons of playoff football to finally have to go on the road and win a playoff game. Together with Andy Reid, the Chiefs quarterback turned Arrowhead Stadium into the host site of the AFC Championship for five years straight, never wavering from their home field advantage in the postseason. But but the Chiefs dynasty really got started long before Patrick Mahomes had hung up his college cleats. Andy Reid rivals the all-time greats when it comes to the very best football coaches, and he has his own case for being the greatest of all time. He learned his craft as a developing coach under the Green Bay Packers head coach Mike Holmgren, working as part of the offensive staff that helped Brett Favre lead the Packers to the Super Bowl in the 1996 season. And when he finally spread his wings, it was the Philadelphia Eagles who gave Andy Andy Reid his first shot as a head coach, announcing him as the franchise's next head coach in 1999. <laughs> and since that day in 1999, Andy Reid has had two jobs. Two. Like, I mean, if you ever need a sign of a great head coach, that's it right there. He stayed with the Eagles until 2012, winning six division titles and earning more divisional round playoff appearances than any other franchise during that time frame. He led the Eagles to the NFC Championship game on five occasions, but the absence of a Super Bowl victory put a great cloud over an otherwise superb coaching career in Philadelphia. He's got to go. I'm sick and tired of coming up short. This game was a fitting end for his hometown. You there. Get close at the end and fall just short. He's got to go. It's time for somebody new. And a change of scene was due. Andy Reid was already an accomplished head coach when he had arrived in Kansas City, but had quite the job on his hands to spin around a 2-14 Chiefs team that had crumbled in 2012 under the watch of Romeo Cornell. Cornell was a product of Bill Belichick, who in his own right is an amazing and great head coach, but his coaching tree it's abysmal. Like, I mean, time and time again, coaches would step out from under Bill Belichick and they would absolutely just crumble in a head coaching position. Like, I mean, Eric Mangini, Josh McDaniels, Bill O'Brien, Matt Patricia, Brian Flores. I mean, the list goes on. Andy Reid, on the other hand, he produced the likes of Sean McDermott, John Harbaugh, Doug Peterson, and Todd Bowles. Two of those men have already won Super Bowls and all four in total have led their teams to impressive playoff runs in their coaching positions. Reed is a superb coach and a mastermind of the game, and those who have emerged from his staff will always serve as a primary indicator for his greatness. He certainly has one over on Belichick in that sense. Reed went 11 and five in his very first season in charge with the Chiefs and barely lost in the wildcard round of the playoffs in a 45 to 44 thriller against the Indianapolis Colts. I mean, he had arrived and he had shown that his team was going to be a contender for a long time. Over the course of the first five seasons he spent in Kansas City, Reed led the Chiefs to five straight winning seasons and four playoff appearances. He developed some great young talent too, including the defensive rookie of the year in Marcus Peters and the troubled Tyreek Hill. But he was just one piece short of building the ultimate dynasty, a quarterback. With the 10th pick, in the 2017 NFL Draft. Partisan. All right, congratulations. The Kansas City Chiefs select Patrick Mahomes, the second. 
Patrick Mahomes had been drafted in the first round of the 2017 NFL Draft, but only saw the field once late in the year with a playoff berth already secured. Alex Smith led another playoff season as the QB one that year, but the team lost to the Tennessee Titans in the wildcard round, and Reed made the decision that in 2018, Patrick Mahomes was going to be the guy. Despite only playing in one game, Mahomes claimed the starting job, and Alex Smith was traded to the Washington Redskins in exchange for cornerback Kendall Fuller and a third round pick. I mean, the stage was set for Andy Reid and his young quarterback to go to work. And over the course of the next few seasons, the partnership with the addition of Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill would absolutely take the NFL by storm. Like Reid had always had a dangerous offense to start with. But with a quarterback that possessed the things that Patrick Mahomes did, that offense quickly became a real problem for the NFL. Like, it's insane. The Chiefs have literally made it to the AFC Championship game every single year that Mahomes has been a starter. And I mean, it's been with relative ease also. Like being the home team in the AFC Championship game for five seasons in a row is absolutely absurd. And with their win over the Buffalo Bills in early 2024, they made it six straight appearances in the conference title game. Tom Brady and the New England Patriots set the NFL record for consecutive conference championship appearances between 2011 and 2018. They played in eight straight, winning five and claiming four Super Bowl titles in that span. Many believe that such a phenomenal record would never be broken or that no team would ever come close. But the Mahomes era Chiefs are already hot on the heels of that record and Mahomes has more than enough time to track it down. By the time Brady reached his seventh consecutive AFC Championship game in 2017, he was already 37 years old. He had five Super Bowls to his name by then, but Mahomes is nearly a decade younger than him in early 2024 and already chasing down his third ring. At 28 years old, which is Mahomes' age while he was playing in the 2023 season, Brady had three rings. He won four of his seven career Super Bowls way later in his career, beyond the age of 37, which is remarkable in itself. But if the Chiefs quarterback can win another one before he's even 30 years old, the GOAT debate could heat up in a hurry. Honestly, it took a while for Belichick to honestly completely trust Brady. And it was only in his late 20s and beyond that that he started throwing the football for league-leading numbers. He won the MVP three times, but Mahomes already has two. He's been the undeniable superstar of that Chiefs team since he took over as the starter in just his second year in the league. And I mean, if he doesn't win an MVP before he retires, I'm gonna be completely stunned, but I just don't see that happening. I mean, just as an isolated talent alone, without the schemes, personnel, and coaching, Patrick Mahomes has already proven that he's a better athlete than Tom Brady. Now, here we go. I'm gonna get all the comments of Brady was a lead. Oh, he ran an offense better than anybody. But Mahomes is a difference maker, whether it's scheme or not. He's a gunslinger who can make unbelievable plays on the move. And without disrespecting Brady's game or the things he's accomplished, Mahomes is far more entertaining to watch. Great quarterbacks all had the clutch gene to pull a win out of any scenario. Joe Montana, Peyton Manning, Dan Marino, Tom Brady, all clutch quarterbacks, all of whom are either already enshrined or will be first ballot Hall of Famers. Patrick Mahomes is as clutch as any of them. And this is the craziest part. If he retired tomorrow, he too would be a first ballot Hall of Famer at the age of 28. If we're talking about greatest dynasties and using Super Bowls as a measure, the Chiefs have won two in the last four seasons. And hell, by the time you watch this video in 2024, they could already have three in five years, which is a very important marker in the dynasty conversation. Only four franchises have ever won three rings in a span of five years. They are the Pittsburgh Steelers of the 1970s with Terry Bradshaw and the Steel Curtain, the Dallas Cowboys of the 1990s with Troy Aikman leading a star-studded roster to three titles in four seasons, and then the New England Patriots twice, doing so in the early 2000s at the front end of Brady's career, and then achieving the same feat between 2014 and 2018. Each of those teams are without a doubt all-time NFL dynasties. I mean, we're talking about some of the most carefully curated rosters in NFL history, with rosters boasting handfuls of Hall of Famers on their rosters. The Chiefs are absolutely no different, and their ability to construct a Super Bowl contending roster year on year 
with the salary cap restraints that they do have, it's absurd. The 2022-2023 season is a perfect example. Going into the season, let's not forget that so many had written off the Chiefs after their salary cap situation forced multiple roster moves. None larger than the day they traded superstar Tyreek Hill. For several years, in the entire time frame in which Mahomes had been the starter, Hill and Kelsey had been his go-to guys. When Tyreek requested a new contract, believing he was worth more, the Chiefs just couldn't afford to pay him and keep the roster together. So they traded him to the Dolphins in exchange for a wealth of draft picks. Following on from that moment, suddenly the Chiefs didn't look anywhere near as dangerous. They had sacrificed one of their greatest weapons and brought in the likes of Juju Smith-Schuster and Marquez Valscantling to try and recreate his production. Other teams suddenly felt their window had closed and analysts kept coming down hard on the Chiefs in complete belief that they'd now find it much harder to reach the Super Bowl without the speedy Tyreek Hill. The defense was really young and they had a lot of turnover that year also. And honestly, many people just didn't believe that that secondary would stand up to the juggernauts that they would face in the postseason. Fair enough. And the Chiefs response? Running the gauntlet and beating the Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, and they all did this without Tyreek Hill. The greatest, possibly one of the greatest top five wide receivers of all time. Like that's insane. And a huge green check mark on both Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes' careers, who proved that no greater single man is greater than the production of their team as long as that duo is together. Now in the 2023 season, yet again, many people went on to write off the Chiefs after one of the most underwhelming seasons in the Reid Mahomes era. Travis Kelsey fell short of a thousand yards for the first time since Mahomes' arrival, and the absence of an elite wide receiver had seemingly caught up to them after all. Guys were making mistakes, letting balls bounce out of their hands, and often causing unnecessary turnovers for the offense. At times, the absence of an elite wide receiver was evident, but despite their naysayers, the Chiefs won the AFC West division for the eighth season in a row and developed a wide receiver, Rasheen Rice, throughout the year as he turned into one of their most consistent threats down the stretch. Mahomes has never surrendered the division since winning it in his first year as a starter, and even in a down year, they hosted a home playoff game against the Miami Dolphins. What might be the most impressive thing of this 2023 season though, was the capability of this defense to step up when the offense was struggling. This Chiefs defense doesn't have many superstars. They don't have an all pro corner like Jalen Ramsey or a pass rusher depth of the San Francisco 49ers, but they do have a unit that works extremely well together and refuses easy yards under the command of defensive coordinator Steve Spagnolio. Under his guide, the team has formed its own stars. Nick Bolton is another of their talents developed inside the building, going from a second round pick in 2021 to one of the greatest commanding linebackers in the game. Spagnolio was with Reed in Philadelphia for the first several years of his time in charge there, and after breaking apart for over a decade, the two reunited in Kansas City when Spags took over the defensive coordinator job in 2019. Since then, the 2023 season has arguably been his best work. The Chiefs came in second in the league in total yards allowed behind only the Cleveland Browns. They were one of the hardest hardest teams to throw the ball on all season and have developed their young corners so well that they're now one of the most respected units in football. This franchise does everything right and has been doing everything right for several years now. It's the perfect blend of superstar caliber players, well-drafted young players, and free agents who buy into the mission in Kansas City. Guys who don't need the limelight, they just need the ring to prove their worth. Some of the Chiefs' biggest contributors of the 2023 season are guys that they produced in their own locker room. Guys like Isaiah Pincheco, who were overlooked by every other team in the league, but made a significant impact on the Chiefs' ability to once again reach the playoffs. And even when they're not at their best, the Chiefs can go on the road in Buffalo and take down Josh Allen and the Bills. Until January of 2024, they had never needed to do that. And again, many wrote them off away from home. So many people have believed 
believe that Travis Kelsey is playing well beyond his years and is honestly just a wash talent at this point, which I don't really understand. And I mean, don't get me wrong, Mahomes and Kelsey definitely have had their misses sometimes this year, but in the playoffs, when it really matters, they emerged once again. And Kelsey was the biggest difference maker in the win over Buffalo. Tom Brady and the New England Patriots might hold the record as the best franchise in football, but for how long? Seven Super Bowls does feel a long way off, but if Mahomes can get his third before he turns 30, who are we to write him off for winning another four in the next decade? They have a first ballot Hall of Fame coach, a first ballot tight end, and a first ballot quarterback. And as a franchise, they might be the best run organization in the NFL. Two Super Bowls feels like the beginning, not the end. Patrick Mahomes is locked into a long-term contract and already one of the most successful quarterbacks of all time. He's won two MVPs, three All-Pro selections, six Pro Bowl appearances, and has led the NFL in touchdown passes thrown twice already. We are witnessing one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time playing in his prime right now. So take it all in. Enjoy the moment because one day the claim of the Kansas City Chiefs having the greatest dynasty of all time might not be such a controversial take after all.